Imagine stumbling upon a book that promises to unravel everything you thought you knew about the state of the world. A text that tears through the veil of media sensationalism and your own psychological pitfalls to reveal a picture so different, so radically hopeful, that it feels like stepping into another dimension. That's what happened to me when I first flipped through Factfulness by Hans Rosling, along with Ola Rosling and Anna Rosling Renlund. It was like someone had pulled me out of a murky, fear-soaked swamp and into the bright, undeniable light of data-driven reality. This isn't your typical feel-good nonsense. It's not a rose-tinted narrative designed to comfort you in times of crisis. This is raw, unfiltered, hardcore truth. The world isn't spiraling into chaos. It's getting better, much better. And you've been living in a haze of misconception, courtesy of your own psychological biases and a media industry hell-bent on feeding your darkest fears. Let's talk about Hans Rosling for a moment. The man was a statistical rock star, a data-driven messiah who dedicated his life to fighting ignorance with cold, hard facts. He wasn't just any educator. He was a relentless truth seeker, someone who realized early on that numbers don't lie, but interpretations can be horribly flawed. A doctor and a professor of public health, Rosling wasn't about sitting in ivory towers pontificating about the woes of the world. He was about grabbing the world by the collar and shaking it until the delusions fell away, revealing the raw, often uncomfortable truths beneath. His TED Talks didn't just inform, they enlightened, challenging every skewed perception with a tidal wave of empirical evidence. And even after he passed away in 2017, his legacy lives on through the Gapminder Foundation, co-founded by his son Ola and daughter-in-law Anna. These two are no mere caretakers of Hans's legacy. They're warriors in their own right, armed with data, determined to slash through the fog of misinformation that blankets your reality. Here's the deal. Your brain is being manipulated. The media isn't just feeding you information. It's feeding you fear, outrage, and oversimplified narratives that make the world look like a dystopian nightmare. And you, like a moth to a flame, are drawn to it. It's not entirely your fault. Humans are hardwired to pay more attention to negative news. It's a survival instinct that served your ancestors well when danger lurked around every corner. But in the modern world, this instinct is being exploited, twisted into a tool that keeps you glued to your screens, watching the world burn one sensationalized headline at a time. Rosling wanted to break that cycle, to show that the world is a far more complex and far more positive place than what flashes across your screens. We're not teetering on the edge of global collapse. We're witnessing one of the greatest periods of human progress in history. The problem is you're just not seeing it. And that's not just an oversight, that's a tragedy. Let's kill this old notion of East versus West right now. The world isn't divided into a civilized West and a backward East anymore. That dichotomy is dead. What we have now is a global landscape where the so-called developing world has made massive strides, closing the gap between rich and poor, educated and uneducated, healthy and unhealthy. The terms developed and developing are remnants of a past where the global elite needed to feel superior to cast entire continents as lost causes. But reality doesn't adhere to such simplistic binaries anymore. Take a look at child mortality rates. In 1965, over 5% of children in 125 countries didn't make it to their fifth birthday. Today, only 13 countries are left in that category. The divide isn't East versus West. It's fading faster than you can blink, and we're all in this together. The outdated mentality that they can never live like us is not just wrong, it's dangerous. It blinds you to the tremendous progress that's being made worldwide, 
and keeps you locked in an antiquated worldview that's long past its expiration date. If you still think the world is mired in poverty, think again. Just 200 years ago, 85% of the planet's population was living in extreme poverty. Today, that number has plummeted to a jaw-dropping 9%. This isn't just an economic miracle, it's a transformation of human existence on a scale that defies comprehension. And it's not just about more money in people's pockets, it's about education, healthcare, and basic human rights reaching corners of the globe that were once considered hopeless. Think about it. 91% of humanity now lives in middle to high income countries. This isn't just progress. It's a revolution in the truest sense of the word, a seismic shift in how we live, how we work, how we educate our children, and how we perceive our place in the world. It's happening right under your nose, but if you're stuck in the outdated mindset that nothing ever changes, you'll miss it entirely. Let's address the elephant in the room, your negativity instinct. You humans are hardwired to focus on the bad, to latch onto anything that looks like a threat, and to let it dominate your thinking. But here's the kicker. By every measurable statistic, the world is getting better. Life expectancy is up, poverty is down, and violence is at historic lows. But you wouldn't know it because your brains are stuck on the bad news loop reinforced by media that thrives on your fears. Rosling called it the negativity instinct, and it's time we all recognized it for what it is, a psychological trap. Your brain is like a magnet for negativity, pulling in every shred of bad news and holding onto it with a grip that's hard to break. This isn't just unfortunate, it's dangerous. It skews your perception of reality making you believe that the world is far worse off than it actually is. It blinds you to the progress that's happening all around you, progress that you are a part of, whether you realize it or not. You're drowning in a sea of bad news, but it's not because the world is falling apart. It's because the media has turned the tap on full blast drenching you in a torrent of negativity. And let's be honest, bad news sells. It's addictive, it's compelling, it's designed to make you keep clicking, keep watching, keep scrolling. Back in the 1980s, entire ecosystems could be destroyed and no one outside the immediate area would know. Today, every tremor, every flood, every crime is pushed to the forefront of your consciousness. You've got a front row seat to every tragedy on the planet and it's warping your sense of reality. This constant barrage of bad news distorts your perception, making you believe the world is spiraling out of control. But here's the truth. For every disaster you hear about, there are countless stories of survival and progress that go unreported. It's time to recalibrate your worldview, to recognize that while bad things do happen, they don't define the trajectory of our planet. We're on an upward curve, but you'll never see it if you're only looking at the downward spikes. Let's tackle the population panic that's been drummed into your heads for decades. You're told the world's population is a ticking time bomb destined to explode into a nightmare of overcrowding and resource depletion. But the data tells a different story. According to UN forecasters, the world population will level off between 2060 and 2100. That's right, we're not facing an endless upward surge. We're approaching a plateau. As poverty declines, so do birth rates. The average mother now has 2.5 children, compared to six in previous centuries. Why? Because with better education, access to birth control, and rising incomes, people choose to have smaller families. We're nearing peak population, 
And the future isn't about endless growth, it's about stabilization. This isn't just a prediction, it's a fact rooted in years of data. The fear of overpopulation is rooted in outdated assumptions, a relic of a time when unchecked growth seemed inevitable. But we're smarter now, more aware, and more capable of controlling our destiny. So why are we still panicking? It's time to let go of the fear and embrace the facts. Fear. It's primal, it's powerful, and it's deeply ingrained in your psyche. It kept your ancestors alive when they were dodging saber-toothed tigers and rival tribes. But now, in a world where immediate threats are far less common, this fear instinct is misplaced. You're bombarded with images of violence and disaster, and your brain reacts as if these threats are right outside your door. But here's the reality. Crime rates are down, not up. In 1990, 14.5 million crimes were reported in the United States. By 2016, that number had dropped to 9.5 million. Yet, because you're exposed to more news than ever before, you believe the world is more dangerous. The media feeds this fear, amplifying your size instinct, making you think every problem is bigger than it is, every threat more imminent. But the truth is, we're safer now than we've been in decades. This isn't about ignoring the real dangers that exist. It's about putting them into perspective. It's about recognizing that fear, while useful in certain contexts, is not the lens through which you should view the entire world. Perspective is everything. If I tell you four million babies died last year, your first instinct might be to think we're living in a brutal, unforgiving world. But what if I told you that in 1950, that number was 14.4 million? Suddenly, those four million deaths, while tragic, take on a different meaning. They represent a massive improvement in global health, a triumph of human progress over the forces of mortality. Context matters, and Rosling was a master at providing it. He knew that without the right perspective, you're doomed to misinterpret the world around you. When you see a headline about a natural disaster, your brain focuses on the devastation, not on the fact that, thanks to modern technology and infrastructure, far fewer lives are lost now than in the past. When you hear about crime, your brain zeroes in on the violence, not on the broader trend of declining crime rates. To see the world clearly, you need context. You need to understand that while bad things still happen, they happen less often and with less severity than ever before. That's progress, and it's something to celebrate. Generalizations are the enemy of understanding. You humans love to simplify, to categorize, to shove people and places into neat little boxes. It makes the world easier to comprehend, or so you think. But the world doesn't fit into boxes. It's messy, it's complex, and it's constantly evolving. Stereotypes about race, gender, and culture aren't just inaccurate, they're dangerous. They blind you to the realities of a rapidly changing world, where progress is happening at a breakneck pace. Take the outdated idea that some regions of the world are forever doomed to poverty and backwardness. The facts show otherwise. From Africa to Asia, Countries are rising out of poverty, building infrastructures, and educating their populations at unprecedented rates. The cuisine in Japan is different from that in England. That's an accurate generalization. But to say that Africa is hopelessly backward, or that women can't thrive in the workforce, those are lies. And lies keep you from seeing the truth. Rosling understood that breaking down these generalizations is crucial to forming a fact-based worldview. Forget what you think you know about the world. Let's rewire your brain for accuracy.
Here's a stat that will blow your mind. 80% of one-year-olds around the world have been vaccinated against some disease. Let that sink in. In a world where you've been conditioned to believe that certain regions, especially in Africa and the Middle East, are doomed to perpetual poverty and poor health, this fact shatters those misconceptions. Global health has made enormous strides and the infrastructure is in place to deliver life-saving medicines to the most remote corners of the earth. This isn't just a blip on the radar. It's a monumental achievement that defies every pessimistic generalization you've ever held. And it's not just about numbers. It's about lives saved, futures secured, and entire generations spared the ravages of disease. This is the kind of progress that doesn't make headlines, but it's changing the world in profound ways. It's time to update your worldview to match the reality on the ground. Travel is the ultimate perspective shifter. You think you know the world? Think again. Stepping out of your comfort zone and into the bustling markets of Marrakech, the crowded streets of Mumbai, or the tranquil villages of rural Vietnam will challenge everything you thought you knew. Rosling understood that seeing is believing, and that first-hand experience is the best antidote to the narrow, limited worldview many of you hold. When you see how people live, work, and thrive in different parts of the world, you realize that the old stereotypes and generalizations simply don't hold up. The world is richer, more complex, and more interconnected than you've been led to believe. And it's not just about the differences, it's about the similarities that bind us all together. Whether you're in New York or Nairobi, people want the same things. Safety, opportunity, and a better future for their children. Travel teaches you that these desires are universal and that the world is full of people striving to achieve them, just like you. It's a lesson in humility, in understanding, and in seeing the world for what it truly is, a vibrant, ever-evolving tapestry of humanity. Finally, let's talk about the urgency instinct, the gnawing feeling that everything is spiraling out of control and that drastic, immediate action is the only solution. This instinct can lead to rash decisions, overblown reactions, and ultimately, bad outcomes. It's the instinct that drives you to stockpile food at the first sign of a crisis, to make snap judgments based on incomplete information, and to believe that the end is always just around the corner. Take climate change, for example. It's real, it's urgent, but the way we talk about it, often in terms of worst-case scenarios, can backfire. Rosling warned against the dangers of exaggeration even when the cause is just. If you push people too hard, they'll push back. They'll feel deceived and your message will lose credibility. What we need is a steady hand, a clear-eyed view of the facts, and a commitment to reason over panic. The world's most pressing problems are complex and they require thoughtful, measured responses. Exaggeration, while tempting, is not the answer. It's time to step back, take a deep breath, and approach these challenges with the calm, rational mindset that Rosling championed. Because in the end, it's facts, not fear, that will guide us to a better future.